Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Horizon Forbidden West, where I'm getting tired. I've been recording for, like, uh, six hours straight. <laughs> we got stuff to do. Needs to see. I was like, what's this? This was, yeah, like an exhibit. You brought here to get to walk around here. It's just interesting seeing the architecture and what it was and what it is and blah blah blah. Oh dang inside. it! Are you ready to? I was see trying me? to get that. Hold. I want to look around more first. As you will. Hold on. Let me get this. Hall of Heroes. This room is dedicated to the memories of Roberto Medina who financed and led the campaign against the federal government and its fleet of general synthetics battle drones. What? Oh my gosh, they led the campaign, because I was like, Medina, that's a familiar name. Led the campaign against the federal government. They fought, they had, oh my gosh, was this, were these the people who were fighting against the federal government to remove them also putting people in temporary like wait to go back to that putting people in temporary like camps that's garbage you know what i mean like that's just no one wants to do that and like it doesn't ever turn out well like ever like sanitation breaks down very quickly morale breaks down it's not a good idea um colonel edward de la hoya commander of the jft blue 10 is the brilliant strategist and veteran soldier who allowed a numerically superior federal forces colonel Anne faraday the legendary orator who oversaw early recon reconciliation efforts and all those who lost their lives during the campaign at the battle of the mojave mojave okay the chief yeah, yeah. waits beyond yes 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 I just wanted to grab that one. So, interesting. They're potentially sort of worshipping. Not really worshipping, because they say that they're fallible. But, like, uh, people who fought against the government. Like, the U.S. American government. I guess that's interesting. I'm ready. Good. Come. If I'm reading, if I'm interpreting this right. This is like a Civil War monument in the south kind of where it's like oh yeah we gotta protect our history of the area and it's like just put it in a, a little textbook or something uh, hold your horses don't do something stupid Oh my gosh, you're the chief. I will see you soon. Oh no, dinner. okay, you're not. Why? The savior of Meridian. Eh? I am told you held back Regala's forces outside Baron Light. And defeated her champion, Grutta. In single combat. It was rough, my dude. Impressive. I met Fashav there too. He said you were a great warrior, and a man of honor. His death is a painful loss among many. We will not soon recover from the massacre of our marshals. But if you are here to pledge your service, that could help consider- Ah, uh, no. Nope, not about- nope. I am not here to fight for you. I need something in that basement. Something that will save many lives, yours included. It's not something you can see, but it is there. I have seen it. You have named your price. Now I name mine. Oh. With my marshals dead, I need your spear. Help me defeat my enemies, and I will grant you access to the chamber. Below. Oh my gosh, this is going to take ages. I don't have a price. I am not a hired killer. I'm here to save lives, more than you can count. I count the corpses of Marshal slain. I count hundreds more to knock them, whose lives hang in the balance. I mean, it's because you left her alive, we'll you know? Them. I will kill anyone who threatens the peace, and you will too, if you want me to open the door to the chamber below. Okay. 
So by that logic, what's stopping me from killing you right now? And taking what I need to save everyone. You could try. You might even succeed. Either way, you must fight. My way might hold off Regala and the slaughter she craves. Fine. What do you need? I need more marshals to keep the tribe together. Such warriors can only be promoted at a trial by combat called the Kuruut. I've sent out a call for the competition. But since Regala seeks to undermine me, she is certain to attack it. She'll want to kill me in front of the assembled clans. So what, you want me to be your bodyguard? No. To defend the cool route. But there is more. Uh, of course. Knowing Regala will attack, one of the clans have balked at sending their contestants. You must go north and force Tecote, the commander of the Sky Clan, to submit and send his best. Force him to submit. Do whatever is necessary. I can't hold a cool route with two of the three clans in attendance. Marshal Cathala will assist you. He was maimed at Baron Light, but he can still be of use. Mm. I sent him ahead to the northern village of Stone Crest. Meet him there, and he will guide you to the Sky Clan stronghold. If you have any questions about your mission, now is the time. So he's not making me a marshal, he's just holding what I want hostage. Also, I'm sure I could open the door on my own. Also, oh my gosh, this is... <laughs> I was really thinking I could just walk in, do some jumping puzzles and run around and grab the next piece. Holy cow, this is... Oh, this is a lot. <laughs> I'm sorry about Fashav. He seemed like a good man. More than a man. A bridge between Tanakh and Karja. No outlander ever earned our respect as he did. I had hoped he would be my voice in Meridian. That peace with the Karja might become something more. An alliance? An exchange. The Karja have much we lack. Our deeds are written in ink upon our bodies. Our memories die with our flesh. But the Karja never forget. Their deeds are written in book and scroll. You wanted to learn from them? As I learned from Fashav, he will be missed. Fashav called Regala your greatest mistake. Why? That is not your concern. Uh. Really? I fought against her forces at Baron Light, and I don't even know what her problem is. She was the deadliest of my marshals, the point of my spear. So what happened? Above all, Regala despises the Karja who burned her younger brothers alive. After we turned back the Red Raids and tore down the battlements of Baron Light, she hoped to chase them all the way to Meridian. She could not see the cost of such a war, nor the benefits of peace after the Mad Sun King fell. When I accepted Avad's entreaties, she went mad, called me traitor challenged me before the marshals. What did you do when Regala challenged you? If you were to knock, you would know that such a challenge cannot be refused. It was not easy to subdue her. I bear seven scars from that fight. The other marshals wanted me to execute her on the spot, but I found I could not sever the bond between us. Her loyalty had been as boundless as her rage, so I spared her. Rather than mercy, she took it as a humiliation, one she will never be free from. So Regala wants you dead? She does. But that will not be enough. She won't rest until all three clans fall in behind her as she marches on Meridian. Who knows? With machines under her control, perhaps she can raise it to the ground. It's been tried before. Yeah. So I hear. By much bigger machines. <laughs> oh. But, you know, still. 
this seems, uh, especially since it seems like they have the support of, uh, I haven't forgotten the Sky people, um, the Ding Nab future people that are more like past people, I guess, <laughs> uh, with their fancy technology. Oh, boy. What exactly is the cool route? Where once the clans fought each other, now we fight as one against the machines. That is my law made manifest in the cool route. Each clan must send contestants whenever I call for the ritual. These contestants face trial by combat against machines in an arena just beyond these walls. Those who distinguish themselves become marshals who bind the tribe together as peacekeepers. His outfit is awesome. You called them peacekeepers, but the marshals I met at the embassy were warriors. Warriors, yes, but more. They renounce the clan that birthed them and pledge themselves to order and peace. They enforce my law. They settle disputes and stand for Tanakh in parlay with other tribes. Without them, I cannot rule. Which is why you must ensure the next cool route takes place. I don't know why you don't have anybody else who could do this. I guess I am pretty famous even here. Not not even counting the Savior of Meridian thing, which could get me, lose me points out here, but the fact that I beat the champion of Regala is a, a big point in my favor, I guess. Why won't the Sky Clan send contestants to the court? Cowards! Of the three clans, they have the most defensible base, protected by a mighty wall called the Bulwark. Their commander believes he can wait out the war between Regala's forces and my own, safe behind his barrier. Staying strong. While you and Regala weaken each other. You think like a seasoned marshal. Good. I may only be 18, looking 25, but I've been through a lot. Why send me to deal with the Sky Clan? Yes, thank you for asking. All to not respect oh, strength. Okay. And you drove Regala back at Baron. I didn't do anything to Regala. Most of your marshals are dead. Correct. What about Catalo? Can't he do it by himself? He is maimed. They will no longer respect him. That hardly seems fair. What is fair about losing an arm? Whether they respect him or not, Catalo still has worth. He knows the Sky Clan. He was raised in their base. He will guide you well. I have been wanting to meet this guy, but now that I had a friend with me in that earlier fight, I'm very much not looking forward. If I could just control my friends and tell them to not do anything, just like put them put them somewhere else and tell them to not attack unless attacked first that would be nice <sighs> whoops called them my, my controller seems a bit weird I think I've been keeping it in storage in a storage bucket in a weird angle without them now my now the thumbsticks are getting a little wonky you said you saw what's in the basement I did on the day of my greatest victory what do you mean? For a dozen generations, the three clans battled for control of this hallowed ground. Only I achieved it. I fought for years, killed whoever stood in my way. When I had finally slain all rivals, I stood alone in the grove. Victory was mine to savor, or so I thought. Thunder roared from the east, and a bolt of blue struck this place. That chamber. Gaia dies. And they throw oh. All around me. The visions of the grove grew louder and brighter. And suddenly a new one appeared before me. The old one spoke. And what they said changed everything. What did they say? <laughs> what did the old one say to you in this new vision? The one called Faraday foretold the growing danger of the machines and said we must unify to stop them. She called for marshals to enforce the peace. Oh. Then the vision faded, never to be seen again. I marked the spot where it shone with my spear, and I took Faraday's words to heart. Renounced war between the clans, trained warriors to fight machines, ordained marshals through the cool route. Since then, the tribe has been at peace until Regala attacked His the Baron. His voice Light. is amazing. The beneath the throne, you went in after the vision. I did. Inside is an ancient device. It hums with power. 
You will see it for yourself after the cool route. This I swear. Um. Anyway, what was I thinking? Um. I was curious why, of all peoples, the Tanakh seem to have some of the, like, old one's words, like chaplain and marshal. Um. Like, like specifically as, like, titles. Um. And it makes sense if they've inhabited this, like, military museum and they've had some, like, uh, capability to access, like, some of the old world tech messages and stuff like that, that words like the marshals would pop up. And probably chaplain. I'll probably figure out how chaplain, you know, they found out the word chaplain, which technically, I'm pretty sure, is like a, um, not necessarily just a counselor. Well, it's... It's a spiritual counselor, right? So I guess they're they're basically the spirit of the word, essentially. I guess you could say, is uh, being followed of the title uh, of the chaplain. Also, it's funny sometimes I see the old ones and I'm like Cthulhu. Is that you? <laughs> you know? I'll do what you want and go north to deal with Dakota. But you'd better not forget about our deal. You will have what was promised if you succeed. Speak to Deco on your way out. She will arm you for the road ahead. Fortify jet. Can I just can I can I can I look back here? Can I can I go? Ah. The arena is closed. Turn Figured. back. Faraday exhibit. Whoa. The job went to Anne Faraday, born and raised in the hot zone, Needles, California, and a colonel in the Air Force when De La Hoya instigated the takeover of bases in the region. She had been at a center and so didn't fight in the war, but was instrumental in peacefully evacuating other neutral personnel. During the conflict, she became one of the nation's leading voices for a nonviolent solution, which combined with her familiarity with the region and military background made her credible to both sides. Three months into her appointment, Faraday gave an address to Congress ostensibly as a progress report, but actually a reigning statement of purpose. She transcended her usual plain-spoken military directness, passionately highlighting the need for community and unity in the face of an uncertain future dominated by climate change and increased automation. It came to be regarded as one of the finest moments of oratory in blah. Okay. Now I'm worried I messed up my controller. It's been kind of at a funky angle for a while in a box. When I pulled it out, I was like, oh no... Hopefully it doesn't get too much worse. De La Hoya exhibit. Among those was Colonel Edward De La Hoya, commander of JTF-10, a deeply charismatic officer with, I don't trust charismatic people, with family ties to Roberto Medina. De La Hoya grew up near the Arizona-Nevada border and responsible for having a task force base near Tux... Tus Tucson. I always want to call it Tucson. <laughs> Several of his subordinates had families in the area. All of them were Apple apoplectic about 73H, despising it as an unforgivable, unforgivable federal overreach. The threat of being driven off their land, no matter how uninhabitable it had become, resonated with, that, with soldiers throughout the unit and beyond, many of whom were from conservative states or areas affected by climate change. Yes, the conservative states would be the ones having an apoplectic fit. <laughs> as the, I mean, I think anybody would really, but they would be even worse. Um, as the Marister agreement took shape, Medina consulted with De La Hoya, who then took the case to his top lieutenants. Everybody agreed that the federal government was likely to send drones against the water fleet. De La Hoya, who came to prominence as a pilot, told the others he was prepared to single-handedly take on the drone squadron. Single-handedly take on the drone squadron? Maybe in a, in a plane. Okay. I was like, that sounds like... <laughs> sounds dumb, mm -hmm, but that makes sense. So you're going to potentially take it out in a plane. sure there's not any hidden back here but you gotta check also I'm not seeing the little pop-ups that I usually see like the little boxes at least in horizon zero dawn they would have be like oh look you have stuff in the vicinity and I'm, I'm not actually sure though if that was part of an upgrade that I got that was like oh look you have you know messages or not yeah mess messages essentially yeah
I mean, I already got these right. Oh no. Um, could you please inform our lit staff and maintenance hosting and security of the following new opening and closing protocols? I've already briefed wife and Dwight and Shania. Thank you. What was it? Holographic displays should all be live 15 minutes before opening time. Inspect showcases for smudges and smite wipe with a dry cloth if necessary. Inspect outdoor areas for temperature and humidity. Closing. Make sure the cleaning robots have finished their sanitation rounds. Sign off on cleaning. Escort cleaners to staff entrance. Final rounds. Hand over to night security. Exit through staff entrance. Okay. Yeah. I mean, they don't need they don't need to have the little hovering thing. They could just leave it purple. Can I go over here? Haha, -ha, I can bypass you. Oh, secret tunnel. Speak. Where's the angry man? Hikaru said you have something for me? A weapon to aid your mission. Oh no, not another one. For the long road to Stonecrest. Many machines prowl along the way, and our scouts have sighted Regala's rebels in the area. Machines and rebels. Nothing I haven't faced before. Indeed. Head north towards the foothills. Ascend its slopes until your legs burn and the chill air catches in your chest. Then you'll know you're in the Sky Clan's domain. Strike true as the ten, Aloy. Thank you. Cleaving sharp shot bow. To knock the trophy taken from Osterum trespassers. This handy long range bow uses powerful tear precision arrows. <gasps> oh my gosh, it's the actual tear bow. Oh my gosh. I saw the cleaving sharp shot and I was like, oh, cleaving, it's probably got some tear capabilities. This isn't even just like the little tear, like, you know, this like a uh, shield with the tear in it. This is the actual, and like, look, 265. Oh my gosh. Oh, I just pulled my headphones out. Whoopsie daisy. Um, I was leaning back too far. Um, but oh my gosh, finally, the Shredder gauntlets are cool and all, but this is going to be a way more reliable way to do it. Um, oh shoot. Oh, anyway, I'm stoked. Perks, the draw speed's increased. Oh my gosh, 265 tear capability. Oh my gosh, I'm just stoked. Let's see. Okay, audio's still working. Yes, I didn't actually think, I thought I was going to be stuck with the gauntlets. Yes, oh my gosh. Gosh, everything is coming up daisies. I don't know if that's the saying, but it is. Oh my gosh. Put it in my little circle. Put it in the circle. Oh, let's edit the coils really quick. Increases impact and explosive damage against enemies in the French state. After a successful melee hit, no. Anyway, give me, give me. The claws are super cool, don't get me wrong. Like, I feel like like a bad A when I throw it out and then I catch it again. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> like, the animation's super cool. But, I cannot, in good conscience, use it now. Maybe I will. I'm being dramatic, but oh my gosh, I am so excited. Let me craft them. Why can't I craft? Oh, I only have seven Echo Shell? Okay. Or no, I have 35, and it only needs seven. Oh, it only... Oh, they've severely limited it. and But I do, I do have precision arrows... Are these, is this different? 
Hunter arrow, precision arrow, hunter arrow. So I would need to potentially upgrade my sharp shot bow capabilities. Like uh, I'm gonna get ether. Guess I'll have to play along with Akaro. Not a uh, not um. I better meet up with Marshal Catalo at Stonecrest. It'll be faster if I ride a machine. Don't tell me how to live my life. Um. Anyway, geez, Louise, I'm so excited. I've been I haven't manual saved in hours. Now I kind of want to. I kind of want to go beat up a machine just to show off what it's. Hopefully, what it's capable of. We'll see. Oh, oh yes. Knocked its freaking tusk right off. Oh, that's not fair. Yep. Oh my gosh, I love this bow. I love this bow. Oh my gosh, I love tear arrows so much. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Oh my gosh, it takes ages to craft them. Trying to knock. Oh my gosh, did I get both its horns off? <laughs> What's this place? I'm trying to hit the dang nab. Go fast, go fast, go fast. Oh my, see, do you see, do you see why? Do you see why I was craving this weapon? Oh. Is this as good as it looks? Is that, is that a legendary? Whoa, <laughs> see, see? Oh my gosh, see how much easier it is? And for me, it's not even about getting the parts necessarily. It's just about getting, like, especially the, the big weapons off and like their 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 offensive capabilities off. I don't even have to use them. Just getting their offensive capability off them, so all they can do is like run around or shoot me. Because I think they always have like a like a primary gun, you know, like that they'll that they'll default to, uh, besides their melee attacks for any of the machines. But oh my gosh, now this game now put this game back on hard. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but oh my gosh, I'm so excited. The freaking Oh, the Thunder Jaw is gonna be so much easier. I say that though, but if it keeps dropping its weapon really close to it, then it's not. It's not gonna be easy. But anyway, I'll leave you guys with that for now. I'm just stoked. <laughs> I'm so happy. It's gonna be so much easier to get the machine parts. It's gonna be so much easier to take down a machine. Plus, it does so much. Like removing that much, like that important of a component, does so much damage to them. Ugh, I'm so excited. So, thank you all again for joining me. I appreciate it. I hope I end this episode like Terror Blast Extraordinaire or something. <laughs> Thank you all again for watching. I appreciate it. Uh, really quick, I want to say thank you to my patrons, to all my patrons, but to especially Reese Kalito, my sapling chair patron. Thank you so much for your support. And an extra special thank you to Christopher, my tree tier patron. You're the super bestest. I thank you so much for your support. Just thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And uh, thank you all again for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.